Do you need to keep bees away from your hummingbird feeders? We'll show you how with tiny little bee guards that we put into our feeders and at the same time we're going to poke a little fun at Elizabeth Holmes because the bee guards look a lot like her bogus nanotainer. So please watch. Here it comes. We found a perfect solution to our bee problem. Now look at these two feeders up here that have been bee proofed. Work very good. There's no, virtually no bees. Bees are coming a little bit, but they don't stick around. Only one or two at a time, and they don't really land. They don't really stay. The little bee guards, I'm going to show you how those work. Can you see how the hummingbird is uh, on the feeder on the left and not at the feeder on the right that has all the bees on it? And uh, now here is a close-up of the feeder on the right. And look at all the bees around that thing. They are coming uh, for the, the nectar, obviously, and it's becoming a real problem for us for driving our hummingbirds away. It looks like this hummingbird would like to go to that feeder, but the bees all over it have, uh, are, are preventing that. He doesn't want to come with that many bees around. So this feeder here, this big red 32 ounce feeder, is now completely covered with bees all day long, and the hummingbirds won't come to it. That's been a real problem because we put this feeder up for hummingbirds, and generally the hummingbirds love this style of feeder. They come and they drain it uh, pretty quickly, but with this bee problem, um, they won't come and if they do come and the bees are there they they fly away to some other feeders now we have bee proofed a couple other feeders however this feeder appears uh, not to be uh, suitable to put the bee guards on so we're going to take it down and replace it with another feeder we'll show you that kind of feeder it's th this is our, our, our patio off our living room and uh, but just outside our front door are some other feeders. I'll show you those in a moment. Can, can you get a look at, uh, at those and see the, how nice the bee proofing has worked? But look how this thing is just uh, covered with bees now and the hummingbirds won't come and we can't have that. So as it turns out we had or we've had a really bad bee problem here uh, swarming over our feeders and um, see these two right here uh, we put those up yesterday and today thinking that that might be a solution, but the, the bees still swarm those. Even, and then we put, um, I'll show you, I'll show you close ups, but we put these little bee guards on there. And these feeders now, in the last couple hours, have been pretty much bee free. We've gotten some great fo photographs of the hummingbirds, and without the bees interfering, the bees seem to intimidate the hummingbirds, especially when the, when the feeder's covered with bees. But now, our solution we seem to have solved this so I'll explain that fully here in just a moment I've taken one of my button feeders from the back patio can you see this see the button feeder these little button feeders are great we love them and all we do they only hold a fraction of an ounce we put the the, the next turn here and then of course we, we screw on the the top so again after emptying out this little button feeder that's what it looks like and washing it, rinsing it out. We do that every time we refill. We refill our feeders twice a week, every three or four days, using the Audubon Society recipe of one part sugar to four parts water. We bring that to a boil for less than a minute, let it cool off, and then we add it to our feeders. Once a month, I do sterilize my feeder with a mix of household bleach and water, and uh, we've had no problem with mold or anything else in our feeders using that regime. But anyway, so, here you have, you have the, the bottom of the feeder, the top screws on like so. Take the top and you get, here again is the uh, package for the, the bee guards. They work pretty good. All we do is unscrew the top and we rinse those out real good. You just clean tap water, warm tap water, hot tap water, get them nice and clean. Once a month, I do uh, rinse them with a, a, a mix of household bleach and water to sterilize them real good. And then uh, when we refill them with the Audubon recipe for nectar, one part sugar to four parts water, we bring that to a boil for maybe a minute, let it cool off, and then we refill our feeders. But anyways, for, to, for the bee guard situation, this is the package the bee guards came out of, okay, very inexpensive to buy, you can buy them online, probably at some, uh, uh, you know, animal pet stores or something, we got ours online, and there is the package they come in, I think there is, um, looks like there's at least uh, 12 in there, put that down, and then um, 
how we attach the bee guard you can see the inside of the button feeder here now see that does that show up I hope and then we take the bee guard it's this little it's this little looks like an Elizabeth Holmes hang on a second The bee guard looks like an Elizabeth Holmes nano tanner. <laughs> what a joke she is. Anyways, um, you take the bee guard and you see this little yellow uh, stub sticking out of the underside of the top of the feeder. All we do is just press it on. And there it is. There's the bee guard in place. We refill the feeder and put it out back in our, in our patio. It's all very easy. And uh, if you're having a bee problem, you might want to try that. So now, as you can see, these two feeders that have had the uh, bee guards attached on the inside of the covers, there's no bees on them right now. They, a few bees have come by, but they don't really stick around, and uh, they're not really getting any nectar because of the bee guards. However, here's what you need to do when you refill them. I did find when I refilled these feeders earlier today, if I wasn't careful, if I, if I overfilled them a little bit, some of the nectar would, would kind of splash out around between the, the cover and the clear bottom and there'd, there'd be nectar right here just below the red cover and the bees were attracted to that. So I took the uh, feeders back inside, emptied out the nectar and then I, um, I washed off the feeders real well, make, got all that nectar off there and then I brought them outside again and uh, refilled them and brought them outside. By the way, these feeders you know, as they as as the hummers feed, the nectar level gets lower and lower, and we think they have a hard time reaching with their tongues. So we actually got these glass beads here. Buy them at a dollar store. Little glass beads like this, and we put them in the. Try to show you that better here. We put these little glass beads in there. You buy them a, a bag of them at the dollar store for a dollar, of course, and then we put those in the bottom of the feeder. And that displaces some of the volume, so we don't have to add as much nectar. And then every three days when we refill, every three or four days when we refill, we're not wasting a lot of unused nectar. So try that. That's a good way to save, to save on nectar. But we are really happy that we have seemingly found a solution, or it looks like we found a solution to this. I'll put some of my feeders back up. And uh, that big red feeder I showed you earlier that was covered with bees, we're going to take that down. We have another one like uh, this one or maybe this one coming uh, online. From an online order we placed and uh, we'll get that going back on the back paddock. We like, we like to have bees back there. So anyways, that's it. Try it yourself. I'll bet you you'll be real happy with this. When I make my nectar, I make a little bit extra than what is needed to fill the feeders. I just put a little storage bottle like this. this is a 16 ounce bottle and I keep that in the fridge because they tend to, uh, the hummingbirds tend to drain. Sometimes they drain those button feeders every day, sometimes more often. But I have, I have ready, a ready made supply ready to go. Here's another product that you might want to have on hand if you need it. This morning after I did my careful washing of the feeders, especially this bigger one in the back, I wasn't careful enough and a little bit of nectar kind of ran down the side. This is a couple spots and a little drop over there and the bees were attracted to that right away. So we get this, uh, this, this is Mighty Mint, it's, it's a mint based, harmless to us and other insects. Doesn't even, doesn't even really harm the bees, it just drives them away. But this Mighty Mint spray, I just take and I set it to jet spray. And I go around the bottom of the rim like there's a bee there right now, see? I try not to get any on top, I try not to get any on top so as not to bother the hummers. I don't think it would, but I just go around the bottom of the rim like that. And that tends to, uh, that'll discourage the hummers from coming, I mean, the, the, discourage the bees from coming. But that works good too, so um, there you go. A couple of good products, uh, get them online, and uh, that's what we did, and give them a try. We hope you like our hummingbird video and all of our videos so if we'd love it if you would like our video and subscribe to our channels I post stuff about hummingbirds regularly gardening regularly and some other uh, environmental issues that you might be uh, interested in so please like and subscribe and uh, we hope to see you again real soon thank you I'm Dave Perling have a great day so there it is our hummingbirds uh, come freely now. The bees are gone. They are not afraid to approach. They're not intimidated by the bees. And here in this next shot, you can see both feeders are bee free. And we have a hummingbird at the one on the left. And they're, they're coming to both feeders now. So we're very pleased with the results of our very inexpensive fix with the bee guards. So I'm struck by how much our little bee guards look like 
an Elizabeth Holmes nanotainer from her uh, bogus blood testing uh, company, Theranos. And uh, I don't have a black turtleneck, and I, but I do have an iPhone and a Macintosh computer. So maybe that makes me more of a next Steve Jobs than she is. But did you ever see her pose? Or she's looking at her nanotainer like that? Here she is. I have rechristened her lizard breath. Anyways, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we hope that you can find a way to, like we did, to bee-proof your feeders too. And these little guys really do the trick.